Hey, what up mushroom peeps? I'm doing a video today on pricing, how to price your mushrooms. <clears throat> it's a question that I get a lot, especially when I'm mentoring someone. Um, and what this video is not going to be is me saying, okay, charge $10 a, a, a pound or, or $8 a pound or whatever. You got to figure out your own pricing, but here's some parameters that I use. Uh, here's some parameters that I use when uh, when I'm pricing um, a new species or a rare species period. So I like to start with the end in mind. The first thing is who is the buyer? So pretty much for, for the most part there's going to be three buyers. One is a chef, the second one uh, would be a farmer's market, and the third would be a wholesaler. So um, if you're doing a farmer's market, generally the price is going to be, not generally, the price is going to be higher than for a chef or a wholesaler because the end buyer is, uh, they're, they're purchasing less. So the more you, you know, the, the client purchases, obviously the less you need to charge um, per pound. So um, a chef, chef would be in the middle of a wholesaler price and a farmer's market price. So let's just say, just for argument's sake, sake that uh, $10 a pound is what you charge for most of your mushrooms, let's say 75% of your mushrooms, like an oyster or something like that. Um, and, and that is actually pretty common, I would say, in the U.S. at least, around 10, between 8 and $10 a share for a chef is approximately the range for, for most people that I see. So let's say we're doing $10, let's say for an oyster for a chef, that means generally you're going to charge double at a farmer's market. You don't normally charge per pound at a farmer's market, you can. A lot of times we'll do in the quart size, uh, which is about a half a pound. So it'll be 8 to $10 for a half a pound. Of mushrooms uh, at a farmer's market, whereas a full pound is ten dollars for a chef. Wholesale, that's a whole other thing. It can be anywhere from three to four dollars and fifty cents, maybe even five dollars. It just depends on who and how much you're wholesaling to. If it's a mom and pop like grocer uh, or something like that, you could actually even probably get more, probably because you're not actually going to be wholesaling. Um, but it just depends on the market size. So you're going to be getting a lot less um, for for those. Uh, two, difficulty to grow. So oyster mushrooms, I would say arguably is the, the easiest to grow. So they would be the cheapest in that quarter, uh, category for difficulty. Um, you have something on the total opposite end like maitake um, that are very difficult to grow indoors. I'm talking about indoor stuff, not necessarily logs, but maitake are a lot more difficult to grow. Uh, they, they have certain uh, temperature requirements and all of that. So um, it's just hard to grow and a lot of people you know, don't grow them for that reason um, and they take a lot of time. Uh, kings, king oysters, they're not very difficult to grow necessarily but they are very finicky so you're not guaranteed to get a good flush just because you do a king. An oyster mushroom, 95% of the time unless something really gets jacked up, you're going to, uh, you know, you're going to have a good crop from that but kings you just kind of never know because it's very dependent on temperature as well as uh, it can, um, it's susceptible to a lot of bacterial issues. Um, so yeah, you gotta rate, you know, how difficult is it to grow? Third thing is the length of time from spawn to harvest. So again, of course, things that, you know, you can kind of turn over really quick, um, those are gonna be cheaper. Again, an oyster. So an oyster, uh, when I spawn it, 14 days, I know from the time I spawn, 14 days from then it's going into the grow and then uh, about four or five days later it pins. So generally around day 21 to 23 is when I'm harvesting those oysters, or you know, at least the majority of them. So um, so those are pretty quick. Uh, again, my talkie on the other end, they take a long time to um, uh, colonize, and I I've actually never grown them, but I I've heard, I wanna say around three months to colonize, somewhere around there, P pretty long, two and a half, three months, something like that. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I know it's a long time, put it that way. Uh, and then again, once they're in the grow, they take a long time to pen and to, to fruit. So that's probably, from what I understand, like the longest um, species that we grow indoors um, to grow. Uh, kings, uh, actually, no, that's not in here. Sorry, uh, chestnut. Um, Chestnut mushrooms, again, it's it's longer than an oyster. Mine take about three weeks to colonize, but then once you get into the grow, it's like two weeks, maybe even two and a half weeks sometimes for it to even pin, and then it's like slow as hell to actually grow from there. So it can be a good like six, seven weeks sometimes until I get um, you know from from spawn to to harvest on a chestnut. 
um, and uh, shiitake. So shiitake, they also have they have a longer incubation time, maybe about a month. Um, but then uh, once they're colonized or whatever, um, about ten days later, you can actually harvest. Um, the fourth thing is first, second, or third flushes. So oysters, generally, you'll do two flushes. Again, this is for commercial production. That's why we're talking about pricing. This isn't for the home grower that you know can just let it go and go and go. So generally, two flushes for an oyster. You know that's kind of the standard. Shiitake, piapino, and kings. You generally do one flush. Now someone can say, well, my shiitake, I go back and I dunk them and rewet them and let them grow again. It's most commercial growers do not let their shiitake uh, do a second flush, period. Um, so for me, it's not, it depends on what category. If you want to do it again and then wait that long uh, time period, that's up to you. Um, but that's just not what I choose to do. On the other hand, you've got lion's mane and chestnuts. I actually let those go three flushes. Um, so the chestnuts, they took a long time to colonize. They took even longer to pin. Uh, but they'll do big flushes. They do a really, mine do like three pound first flushes, two pound second flushes, and a good pound to a pound and a quarter on the third flush. So even though I'm waiting a long time for it, it's, it's like giving me a lot of product. So I like them and I grow a lot of them. Um, lion's mane, that's another one that uh, I'll keep around. I don't grow a lot of them. I might just do like one batch, like 20 bags. But then those 20 bags, like I'll let it go two times and maybe even three times. So um, it, it's like the gift that keeps on giving. So um, so they're not that bad. And they're quick. They're quick to, um, to colonize and everything. Five, difficulty to harvest. Shiitake. I have such a hate relationship with taki. I do not like growing shiitake, and here's why. It takes long to colonize. I don't have the room. I don't have lots of colonization space. So anything it takes a long time to colonize, I'm generally going to shy away from. Uh, but I'm going to charge more for it because of that. So I choose not to grow shiitake. Uh, I buy my shiitake blocks from Earth Angel Mushrooms. Um, you know, if I have more colonization space in the future, I'll probably do my own. But that's just what I choose to do. So already my profit is going to be less just because I'm purchasing the, the blocks from someone else. So, um, but on top of that, on top of them taking a long time to colonize, um, not so much time to, to uh, you know, once it goes in the grow, but it takes a long time to colonize. It takes up a lot of space, you know, to, um, well, that is, it takes a lot of space. The, the biggest thing is the harvesting. It takes forever to harvest. So with the oyster mushroom, you just go up to the block, you know, do like that, Boom! You know, put it in the put it in your tote. Uh, with shiitake, you either have to use a knife or use you know a pair of scissors. And I'm doing like a hundred pounds at a time. Shoot, sorry, I've got a timer going off. My bad. I'm doing green. Um, but anyway, so it takes a long time uh, for me to harvest them. You know, and my hand hurts. You know, I'm holding the scissor for like a couple hours or whatever. Um, you know, snipping these things off and. And you, know, you gotta check them for mold. Sometimes you have a little mold. It's just, it's the pits. I hate growing shiitake. Here's the last thing about shiitake. So because of that, I should be charging more for shiitake. In my pit, it takes a long time. It's a pain in the ass. My hands hurting after you know uh, cutting them off. But the chefs a lot of times don't necessarily see the value. They like the way ours look, you know, and, and the, the texture and everything better than the ones in the um, that they get from Capital Foods and all of that or, or U.S. Food, Cisco. But they can get them from there, and they can get them there a hell of cheaper than they can from us. So a lot of these other things that we sell, you know, lion's mane, the pia pino, you know, whatever, they really can't get, or you know, it's very difficult for them to find anywhere else. So they do come to us. But shiitake, they can get somewhere, even if the quality is not up to par. But it's cheaper, so it's very hard to charge a lot more for shiitake, which is why this girl hardly grows shiitake. If I have a chef that's a really good chef that orders a lot of other stuff. They want shiitake, they're gonna get some shiitake. But you know, I tell them it's a pain in the butt, and I don't really like growing them. Um, so that was really the five things. So basically, what you have to do at that point is kind of put what you want to grow into the categories. And you, know, you got a good category and a bad category. And you know, like long time to to colonize, long time to um, fruit. You know, hard to harvest, easy to harvest, and all that. If you got a lot of stuff in the good column, price it lower. Price it at that ten dollars. But if it's harder, uh, oh, the other thing was kings um, in terms of uh, the harvesting. It's the shiitake that I don't like to harvest. Piapino or 
they're okay. Um, they're, they're kind of almost like doing a chestnut, um, but I have started to um, cut off the substrate for one of my, one of, it wasn't just one thing. I'd been wanting to do it. It just takes more time uh, to either cut the uh, substrate off with the knife. Uh, you know, if there's a little bit on there, that's fine. Um, I just want to make it as easy as possible because I am charging, uh, you know, a premium price, a good price for these gourmet mushrooms. You know, I want the chefs to get, um, you know, I, I want to make their lives easier. So, um, so piapinos, you know, when you're harvesting them, and I've just started growing them, it comes off in a lot of different clumps. And so you have to, I'm taking scissors now, which is not that bad. It's not like shiitake because they're, they're much uh, smaller stems. Uh, but you just have to, like, cut kind of a lot. Um, where was I going with this? Um, kings. So kings are another one. You don't just, you know, take it, pull it off. You actually take a knife and you cut it. Normally I cut it like a diagonal here and a diagonal there. So you're cutting every single one, which again can take some time. It's a lot more than doing just a regular oyster where you get a big clump. Boom. You got to cut them, you know, each, um, each one. So it takes a little longer. Uh, it's not as bad as shiitake, but it takes longer. So that would be in the kind of bad column. So just, you know, you, you do your columns and see what it is that you like, uh, don't like about that species, how hard it is to grow for you and your conditions. Um, another big thing is temperature. Um, does it require it to be in the 50s, you know, especially in the heat of the summer? Uh, if, 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 it is, uh, if that species is required to be at a lower temperature or does really good, uh, best at that lower temperature, you got to account for that because your air conditioning bill is going to be a lot higher um, versus something that kind of really doesn't matter, you know, um, it can kind of go either way. So just look at that, use whatever your starting point is and go up or go down from there. So I hope that is helpful. I also hope that um, for some of these um, species that you've never grown that you can kind of get an idea a little bit from, you know, uh, from a perspective on at least my perspective on how hard it is to grow some of the challenges or good things uh, about them to grow. But uh, if you have any questions or comments, definitely uh, leave them below. I've been kind of struggling sometimes to get back to comments, but I'm just really busy, but uh, I'm doing the best that I can. So take care, thanks, and uh, good luck on your pricing. If you want any information on uh, the tools and stuff that I use in my own grow, you can go to my kit page, which is kit.com slash funky fun guy. Take care, see you next time.